When we were first dating, I was trying to convince her to marry me. I had been living down in Australia, and she was wondering about me. Is he ever going to settle down enough to be merry and quality? I bought this postcard and I mailed to her, and it had this picture of this old couple, and they were like in their 90s. And they were sitting right there by Sydney Harbor where I was sitting eating these oysters at this place. And I wrote on the back, I said, see, here's us in 70 years. I think about that card now, you know, a lot. And that part's hard. This isn't the story of someone dying. This isn't the story of one family. This is the story about living. No matter how long that you have or who that you are. This is a story about life. This is a story about love. The family ranch up in Wyoming is on the edge of the Wind River mountain range, which is, I think, probably the best mountain range in the lower 48. My great-grandfather homesteaded out here in Wyoming, and so every summer I'd come out with my family, and especially my grandmother when I was young. It's been really important for me to keep the thing going. It's a way to connect to my ancestors and to look forward to my son carrying on that tradition. I sort of had a 30-year plan for the ranch, earn a little money and make the place shine like I wanted to. We were sitting in the car when Dr. Maroney called me back with the uh, biopsy results and they were really bad. I was only 55 as opposed to, you think of prostate cancer often in older men. Then finding out that I'm, you know, full on stage four with Mets to bones and lungs, it was just a huge shock. They said maybe he could make it three to five years if we could get through the first year. And we didn't know if he'd make it through the first year because it was so aggressive. Imagine your life like a salad bowl, right, with all the stuff you built in it your whole life. Well, it just took it and just threw it up in the air. There's so much taken away. And that's, that's the part that kills me is with Karen Lee. This idea of leaving her. The odds are 50-50 I'll see Eli graduate from Dartmouth. The idea of not seeing Eli get married and then not see grandkids and not spend this time I had planned with Karen Lee is a, it's a bloody disaster. When you're expecting to have somebody to be old with, and I don't know how I'm going to take care of a ranch by myself. Eli will do well. Receiving a diagnosis of advanced cancer, particularly at a young age, you know, is something that oftentimes we're not prepared to process. I think we have this narrative. We catch it early. We fight, we beat it. And that that's kind of the cancer narrative in our culture in a lot of ways. So when you get a diagnosis that doesn't jive with that, it can be really alienating. I've used up my two guaranteed years and nobody has a clue how long that goes other than they don't think it'll be more than a couple more years. How do we find meaning in the face of suffering, in the face of, you know, anticipated loss? It's scary, that initial like impulse, right? Because you, you do, you want to like shy away, like, I don't, we don't want to talk about death. We don't want to acknowledge that this is incurable. But like once you kind of turn into that, you get to a new place.
you know, where you can really talk about the things that matter. At the ranch, I realized I can sort of step out of time and just be present. We talked about all the different ways that people can find meaning in their life. There are different categories. Simple things like music or enjoying art or nature. Legacy turned out to be a big one for me. Life always holds the potential for meaning. And that as human beings, we are kind of meaning seeking. And I think that really resonated with Joe. Um, and it allowed us to kind of form a foundation and a plan for moving forward to keep him living his life. It's going to be Eli's last summer before he's going to do six quarters in a row in Dartmouth. And so he, was, he really wanted to do something big this summer. And I'm listening to him and he turns around and he points at this cabin. The boho cabin as it sat was really an abomination. I got in there and decided that the only really good thing to do with it would be to tear it down and rebuild it completely from the bottom up. It's actually sitting on probably the nicest spot for a cabin on the whole big ranch. We had to uh, just make it be the best cabin in the best spot. I about wanted to pass out, you know, because I only have severe fatigue and a few other things. It's possible to live a rich and meaningful life with metastatic cancer. I think that that's rewriting the narrative we have, right? It's not just about fighting and beating it. It's about living well and that that's always a possibility. He's very optimistic. We always take what Eli describes as the estimated time for a job, and then I'll separately estimate the time for a job, and it's twice as much. There's this big transition in our energy, going from yuck and your chainsawing and destroying things to Goodness, let's actually build something that'll be here 200 years from now. So this is, this log's fun. It's the last big log. And of course it has to go on the very top. It's a ridge pole. And it's 30 feet long. We have varying opinions about how much it weighs, but we all agree it's a lot. So, a little prayer. By building the cabin, and building things here, a piece of him is now here. I'm just so filled with joy that he cares. I'm just so proud of him. Go right back to Dr. Colva, right? It just nailed this meaning in my life down like with a spike to that spot and said, well, there it is. Whether I'm alive or dead, look, we did this. and. Uh, is, it was like nothing I'd ever experienced. Something about nature and the timelessness and the water running down this creek. It was here before I was born. It'll be here after I'm gone. And there's something comforting and thinking, well, all of these time scales, everything seems too short. The total eclipse came over here back in August of 2017. Right over the lake, the line of maximum totality. And it started and it got complete and it was going to be complete for two minutes. Right as the sun started to peek out from behind, I thought, oh, wait, that was too short. That was too short. And then it was just after I finished my chemo and all of it. And I thought, oh, everything's too short. It's helped me to understand time better, the whole diagnosis and the situation and let go of trying to control time. The thing about the eclipse was it was exactly long enough. I was wrong. You know, it wasn't too short. It was, it was what it was meant to be. The planets lined up for two and a half minutes and that was it. I 
I love everything about our life. To me, it's just been a fairy tale. That means the world to me. So thank you I so much. You. Thank <laughs> you. Cancer completely can upturn somebody's apple cart, and it did mine. But what I've come to learn through all this is that what I'm out here doing, I'm doing with Karen Lee and with Eli and as a family together as a unit, is living every day and making the most of our time with each other and treating each day as the blessing that it truly is.